Good morning, everyone. Morning, everybody. Welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramph. That was Asaph Adonai on piano. Asaph, what song was that? That is Love Be Tender by Elvis the King. Nice. <laughs> I like that rendition. Well, it's good. Monday, guys, and we were back from our week hiatus from a um, nice little week. Did you do anything special? Did you go anywhere? Did you? You know, I did not. I was able to uh, go out on a Thursday, though. That was fun. Yeah. Haven't been out on a Thursday in a couple years. Yeah. <laughs> really out. Well, it, it's so weird. It's like Missoula's is like a waste Wednesday, t- uh, um, thirsty Thursday. Yep. Um, Friday is man, Friday. And then everyone's sleepy on Saturday. Yeah. But I don't know. I just everybody, slept in. It was nice. Everybody starts their weekend on Thursdays. It's true, it's, except for us. Yeah. Because we have Wake Up Missoula. Yes, we do. I usually start my weekend on Sunday, but then by then it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, I, I'm like, Sunday, I'm just like, all right, I've got enough, uh, re- I, I've relaxed enough over the weekend now, it's time to do something. It's like, oh, wait, I have my morning show, so I really can't do anything. Oh. All right, Excuse so. me. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> but the, um, the weather, um, it's getting cooler and cooler, um, and we can yeah, expect what? rain What's this happening? week. Yeah. It, it was like all nice and sunny and beautiful, and now it's just going to rain. Well, apparently, uh, according to weather experts, um, it was a heat wave. Oh. It was like a spring heat wave. It, 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 I think it doesn't really start summer until like the summer solstice. Which yeah, which is, is like the 20th this year. 20th. Yeah. Yes. It's usually on the 21st, but because it's leap year, Oh, so 20th. exactly one week from today is the beginning of our summer camps, but I'll get to that yes. after. Let me talk a little bit about weather. It is currently 44 degrees outside. It felt a little cooler this morning I was as I was walking to work. Um, you have a high of 75 today, a low of 46. And then, of course, by tonight, you can expect that chance of rain to start um rearing its ugly face mm-hmm. so this week you can expect uh, cloudy um, patchy rain areas unless the wind really picks up and blows all those uh, cumulonimbus clouds out of the way it's true so if you guys want to get to the river today would be the best day other than that you have to stay indoors and be all chilly yes. but we do have a guest on today we've got audrey here and she's from uh the blue mountain clinic and they're going to be talking about their newly uh appointed uh youth advisory board they're yeah. looking for applicants so yes. she, we'll hear from her in a few minutes Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we have a uh, the weekly road report. Ooh. So there's a lot of um, road constructions and constructions being done. I'm going to basically talk about some of the continuation, Hillview Way, um, from 23rd to 39th. It's like up the Hillview Way. Um, they're going to be through SIDs. They passed about two years ago. They're finally um, working on this project. And it's due to be done. Um, it's basically, you know, when Russell turns into Hillview, yeah. once it passed Higgins, from there, they're uh-huh. changing the road. They're adjusting it, so it's a little safer, like, during winter, when you're, like, going down a slant. Yeah. It's less scary. Yep. <laughs> so it's a very they, steep They're going to be working on that. Um, Linda Vista Boulevard, it's Lower Miller Creek to uh, Jack Drive, and then, of course, starting today, Linda Vista Boulevard will be closed for the installation of a sewer main. Oh, wow. And then you see all these words right here. Yep. Um, of course, Mount Avenue reserved to Eaton. Um, of course, the city's um, installing sidewalks all, all across Mount, which is nice. Good. The street's always been kind of like really enclosed. And it's very yeah. like there's residential areas nearby and all that stuff. So if you live in that particular area, you're going to have to start shoveling the sidewalks. I just think it's silly that they don't have sidewalks to begin with. There's a lot of different places that don't sidewalks. I mean, like, Missoula <laughs> grows out. Yeah. Like, Missoula's always gr- grown out, which yep. is why there's always, like, a couple infrastructure things like, here and there. It's like, <laughs> oh, we'll put a sewer in, and then we build up. It's like, what about sidewalks? It's like, oh. oh. yeah, that's right. Oh, crap. We'll get those later. Okay, so, years. of course, Old Highway 93, um, okay. they closed that down. It's like uh, that road that goes right next to the... Uh, I guess the country club here in Missoula. Where's the country club? The country club is off Highway 93, which is behind Brooks. You know how you go off Brooks? <laughs> it that goes to new old Highway 93 is okay. like a road right next to it that's a uh, parallel to okay. uh, uh, Brook Street that goes like also connects to um, Miller Miller Creek. Interesting. Okay. So that road's closed, and that's where they're building the overpass bridge for the pedestrians, um, mm-hmm. for the bikes and the pedestrian bridge and all that stuff. So that's another thing. And of course, uh, Fort Missoula Regional Park is um, Guardian. Way is closed, so they're doing a um, construction of the Fort Missoula Regional Park, which they passed that bond a couple years back, and now they have the money uh, collected over through the taxes to put their down payment for construction of Fort Missoula Regional Park, which will consist of five softball fields, a dog park with a pond, oh my god, and more. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah, just a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's about it for your roads report. Uh, let's talk about um, some social networking. If you're interested in finding out more, you can log on to the City of Missoula's website, ci.missoula.mt.us, or you can Google City of Missoula. It's 
It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you want to find out more about us, you can wake, go to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice that we made you write it up twice. You can like us on Facebook. You can follow us on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. Missoula Community Access Television is also on Twitter. You can like us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can also like us on Facebook. And to find out more information, check us out on MCAT.org. Okay, and we have some new programmings happening um, tonight and tomorrow. Oh, um, nice. We have, um, after our rerun this afternoon, we always have a rerun at 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, on MCAT. So if you are since at 2 p.m., hi, 2 p.m. people. <laughs> um, and then after that, we have uh, the uh, flagship after school program, um, the stuff that I've done. It's like a movie making club through the flagship, and it's uh, featuring Lowell School and Washington Middle School. Nice. And there's a couple of the programs, Hidden in the Forest, and then of course, uh, Right Now TV. Um, Indian um, Wills, um, CLE, will also be on tonight. Um, but of course, uh, tomorrow there's a bunch of new programming that I have clips for, and it has the uh, 14th Annual Central and South Asia Studies Conference, number four. So it's number four of a forever ongoing series that will pretty much last throughout this summer. Uh, that's tonight at 5.30. Um, 7 p.m. is the uh, Presidential Lecture Series uh, featuring um, Hendrick Smith. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, um, From Seed to Pantry, an Urban Garden Workshop Series is also on tonight, uh, tomorrow night as well. So, um, without further ado, um, here is a little taste of what you guys can see tonight on MCAT. And when we come back, we'll have Audrey on talking about her program. Finally, after that 50 plus years in journalism, it might have been time to retire. But instead of that, Hedrick Smith took on some of the most challenging issues facing our society now and published another book in 2012, Who Stole the American Dream? And it's that that I think will form the basis for tonight's lecture. Produce all summer. Say it's a crop like broccoli where it produces once. Maybe you can get some side shoots, but generally it just has one output. And it's at one time that you harvest from that, from that crop. Um, that's the kind of crop that you would want to do a succession planting on. So say you're a farmer or a backyard gardener, and you want to have one crown of broccoli every single week, because that's what you think you want for your family. That's a great idea, and what you'd want to do is figure out what the harvest window is for that crop. So for you, it's going to be one week. So you're going to want to go back in time to when you start those seeds, either by direct seeding them right in the soil where you're planting them, or by starting them in a greenhouse, which we'll talk about earlier. We'll talk about later. Hey, oh, hey, we're here back. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. We're back. Here. We're here with Audrey from the Blue Mountain Clinic, and she is here to tell us all about her youth advisory board. And so um, what can you tell us first off about the Blue Mountain Clinic? Yeah, so um, Blue Mountain Clinic uh, has been sort of a Missoula staple um, for, oh my gosh, I should know this. Uh, it's been... A long time. A long time, yeah, since the 70s. Um, we've been in our current building um, for almost, I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, That's fine, <laughs> like yeah. Like 15 years. Cool. Um, so we're a full family practice. Um, we offer abortion services, reproductive health services. Um, we see families of all different kinds. Um, we do transgender health care. We have mental health counselors. We do immunizations. We do a lot of yeah. stuff. Yeah. And the one thing that is uh, awesome. nice about Blue Matter Clinic is very, uh, it's very local, and like everybody about Missoula is all about local stuff. And, yes. Um, Blue Matter Clinic is very, very inclusive. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and even though um, we do uh, provide services to a lot of low-income people, we don't get any government funding, so we really get to do. Um, whatever we want to do and most of the time that um, means putting our patients first um, and being able to focus on uh, providing excellent patient care. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's talk about this program a little bit. You guys are looking for um, teens age um, 13 to 19 to be part of this mm -hmm. youth advisory board. Yep. So let's uh, explain a little more about this. Yeah, so we've had um, sort of an informal sex ed program for many years um, just because we know that that's something that people in the community need for their health care. Um, so, you know, we'll, ha we'll do lessons um, in classrooms with different groups. Um, we'll speak at 
uh, you know, different events in the community. Um, but you know, we've been sort of brainstorming about how we can make it really authentic and relevant to young people because that's who we want to serve with our sex ed program. Um, and we felt that a good uh, starting off point would be to form a youth advisory board um, to tell us what they need um, and to represent the young people in their community. Um, so that's kind of the basis of it. Um, and I don't know anything about technology, so um, having like young people to consult with yeah. um, for social media, um, and outreach um, and eventually we want to see the participants of the youth advisory board take on a peer advocacy role um, not just for sex ed um, but for other youth health um, sort mm -hmm. of needs as well. So um, how can awesome. people sign up? We, we have your website. Um, um, can yeah. You, can I do, talk us through it? It's super easy. So um, <laughs> you'll just go to <laughs> you'll just go to uh, bluemountainclinic.org and it's um, the third banner down. It says Youth Advisory Board. So you click on oh, that. Okay. Go up a little bit more. Oh. No. Third banner down. There, there you it go. Mm -hmm. So you click on that. Um, and then from there, has a little bit of information about what you're getting into. Um, and then under join, you just click on apply online and you can just type the information in right there. And then it sends it directly to my email inbox. Um, and we're accepting these applications till June 24th. Awesome. And yeah. so how many people are you looking for? You know, um, because it's the inaugural group, um, I, I'm hoping, if we can get 10 people, that'd be awesome. Um, if it's not 10 people, that would be awesome too. We've already had a few applicants that I'm really excited about, um, but yeah. It's usually about just like getting um, one kid and then inviting their friends to come along. You it's easier to absolutely. talk about this kind of stuff with your friends rather than a bunch yep. of strangers. Mm -hmm. And it's always nice to come yeah. with your posse. And, yeah. and I am a, a huge proponent of that. I think that you're totally right. That's a great way to start comfortable conversations. Yeah, is yeah. with your friends. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And so what, I guess, where can people like find out more information about like safe sex? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Um, yeah. There's lots of good information on the internet, um, but as you know, there's lots of other stuff on the internet too. Um, one of the uh, jobs that we'll get to work with the Youth Advisory Board is um, kind of doing compiling a list mm -hmm. of all the resources online that we really like. Um, Sexetcetera.org is really good. Scarletteen.org is really good. Um, Planned Parenthood mm -hmm. has lots of awesome resources. Um, Advocates for Youth is another one. I could just rattle off a list. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get to a point um, where our Youth Advisory Board has their own little section on our website. Um, we'll probably get our own Facebook. Um, mm -hmm. And it'd be cool to get kids who are tech savvy, who are interested in blogging. Um, and just like yeah be able to do start, all this stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. starting online conversations about healthy sexuality um i think you know one important thing um and this is more relevant than ever um just with the tragedy in orlando um is talking about um lgbtq rights mm -hmm. um and yeah i think that kids are up for those conversations you just kind of have to start somewhere with yeah. that prompted mm -hmm. I agree it's and like I one think of those questions they ask is like why do you think people are uncomfortable with this kind of you yeah know, mm -hmm. thing? Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely but it's super important and awareness is really important and so I'm really glad that you guys are doing this cool. me too if I was a teen I would definitely sign up <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> if you know any teens mm -hmm. um, who you think would be good for it that's been I've noticed that's uh, how most of our applicants are coming in um, they have an adult who recommends them to it um so yeah uh cool. yeah Great. um and yeah. really easy to contact us if you just do um email info at bluemountainclinic.org to get more information um if kids are under the age of 18 we're definitely going to want some parental consent yeah. um since we're talking about uh some big topics and mm -hmm. big ideas um but i i feel like anyone who comes out uh, is already mature enough to have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. So when and where can people get more information? 
one more time. Um, yeah, bluemountainclinic.org is the best place to go, and it's right there on our um, our front page. Um, or they can email uh, info. It's just info at bluemountainclinic.org. Awesome. Thank well, you well, thanks, Audrey. Much. Thanks, guys. Thanks yeah. Us. We'll be right back after this, everyone. We're back. I've got some events for you. Okay, so starting, uh, this is what's going on in your community on Monday. Today is the first day of summer, not <coughs> official date, you know, but the first day of summer uh, for all the kids. All the kids are finally out of school, and I've been out of school for months. So uh, over at the Missoula Art Museum, they've got a Raptors in Art class. It's all week long. It's a camp. It's with uh, Bev Bluekert and Kate Davis, and so they're going to be uh, learning about raptors and owls and hawks and all these awesome birds, as well as drawing them. So you can call 728-0447 uh, to join in this camp. It's not until 10 o'clock this morning, so maybe there'll be some more spots open. Over at the Missoula Public Library, uh, they're starting their kids' table again this summer. It starts at 11.30, and so what it is, is a free weekday lunch program open to youth ages 18 and under in the large meeting room. Um, and it starts at 11.30, and there's usually an activity at 12. So you can call 721-2665 for more information. Um, but it's happening all summer long. Over at the MCT Center for the Performing Arts, they, arts they've got a group music class and summer camps. Starts at noon, and so this week is uh, Grow Music and Tiny Tots Missoula. They're offering uh, group music classes. So it's for string players, open to all ages and levels. So call 728 1911. Over at Roots Acro Sports Center, they've got their Acro Dance Camp that starts at 1230. So they've got full days and half days. Full day is at from 930 until, let's see, 330. And then, or 9 to 3.30, and then a half day is 12.30 to 3.30. So this is for the half day. Uh, it can be, let's see, it start, looks like it's ages 7 to 12, uh, but they also accept 5 and 6 year olds, but they'll do like a different things with them. Um, and so it's pretty much, uh, they've got skill-based ga skill games, challenges, and providing opportunities for frequent success. Adorable. So if you want to do a half day camp and a weekly rate, uh, it is, let's see, for registers, $80, walk-in is $90. Um, and then for a full day is um, $150. And regular registration, let's see. Yeah. Regular registration is $175, actually. Sorry, you guys. Their prices are confusing. It is really confusing. Yeah. It's, it's like regular rate is $25 more than walk-ins. But the walk-in is only for a uh, four-day, four days, which is a 4th July week. Oh. <coughs> All right. Over the Missoula Center, Senior Center, they've got their bridge group that starts at 1. And then at uh, the Garden City Duplicate Bridge Club, they have their duplicate bridge at 1 o'clock as well. 
Uh, over at the Rocky Mountain Ballet Theater, there's a So You Think You Can Dance camp starting at 2. Uh, this is for classes ages 10 and up in contemporary hip-hop and ballet. No previous experience is necessary. Uh, you can call 549-5155. Over in the Missoula Public Library, they've got a computer electronics and their makerspace. It starts at 3. Uh, so from 3 to 6, you can go in, on, in there and work on a project of your choice or learn how to use their equipment. And then over at the base at the Warehouse Mall, they've got Word Play. It starts at 4. It's uh, Word Games, Poetic, Exploration, and Free Writing and Expansion. At that Top Hat Lounge is Raising the Dead, the live recorded shows The Grateful Dead. It starts at 5, so it's a, for, for a couple hours, it's all these uh, live recorded shows from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. So 40 years of Grateful Dead music. Over the Dram Shop, they've got a uh, this thing called Business and Brews, Crafting a Local Business Community. And so what they're going to be doing is pretty much it's like socializing learning from a local small business. So the panelists will include Zootown Surfers, Big Sky Brewing Company, Grizzly Hackle, and The Cycling House. Mm. Yeah. Uh, over at Tamarack Road and Highway 1210 is a ribbon cutting for the new trail on the West Riverside. It starts at 6. And so what it is, it's going to be at the intersection of Highway 210 and Tamarack Road in Pine Grove. Ceremony is going to celebrate the completion of the first phase of the West Riverside Bicycle Pedestrian Trail. Uh, so local residents are, ex are encouraged to join in the celebration. They'll have lemonade and cookies, and you can walk along the trail, and then they're going to have their Bonner Milltown uh, community meeting right after that. Uh, over at the public library is beginning word class. It starts at 6 p.m. You can call 721-2665 if you don't know how to use the word program. Then over at the Roxy Theater, there's a movie called Purity Myth, or The Purity Myth. It starts at 7 p.m. And so what it is, it's a movie that's kind of exposing the patriarchal, like, like influence that religion may have on um, undermining women's sexuality. And so it's about this woman that targets the persistent patriarchal assumption that men know what's best for women and what a woman's worth depends on what she does or does not do sexually. So it's all about that and uh, clarifying that and exposing that. So that should, that's gonna be pretty interesting. Um, especially with all these things about gender equality and gender rights and yeah. So that's at the Roxy Theater and that starts at seven o'clock tonight. And then my last event for Monday is Blues Monday over at the Badlander at 9 o'clock. So that's what I've got going on for you for Monday. We're switching gears now, and we've got Musical Notes with ASAP Fat or Nye. First of all, I wanted to say I enjoyed the week off, but I'm glad to be back working. <laughs> Me too. Second, I wanted to give my condolences and prayers to the families of the victims that were needlessly slaughtered yesterday. I don't know. Did you, did you hear about that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know you were talking about the LGBT community and so on. So, you know, whatever a person thinks, that was uncalled for. I agree. You know, that was absolutely uncalled for. So I just want to give my condolences, not only to the LGBT community, but, you know, the United States and so on, and families and victims and so on. I agree. That being said, our guest, if she were here, would also give her condolences because we just lost her sometime like about a week or something like that ago. And, of course, we were shut down then. Anyway, in 1973, our guest with her husband, Paul Crouch, founded the Trinity Broadcasting Network, known to the world as TBN. And our guest, there she is on next to her husband, our guest is Jan Wendell, known to the world as Jan Crouch, and there's her husband, Paul. We just lost her, just lost her, probably not even a week ago. So I didn't have a chance to report that. So I wanna give this little tiny tribute to Jan Crouch because this is a woman like Mother Teresa who spent her entire life helping people, only she did it through television, whereas Mother Teresa did it, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. This lady founded an organization called, um, hold on, let me be able to get up here. It's an organization, a, a channel for children called Smile of a Child Children's Channel, where she worked with children and she also started what was called the Church Channel, which helped a lot of people over the years. And she, this woman did a lot of charitable deeds like Mother Teresa, she and her husband, but especially her. So that's why I'm singling her out. Her awards in 1990, she won an honorary Doctorate of Humane Letters degree from the Oral Roberts University. She also got the Golden Angel Award for Excellence in Media 
and two-time Parents Television's Council Entertainment Seal of Approval recipient <laughs> for her smile of a child and for TBN. So that's quite an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. And finally, Jan was an American religious broadcaster. I, it makes me think of you. I know you won't go into religious aspect, <laughs> but you want to be a broadcaster. And she's the daughter of Reverend and Mrs. Edgar Bethany. She grew up in Columbus, Georgia. And her father was the founding president of the Southeastern University in Florida. So that's kind of a interesting beginning. Mm -hmm. And as I stated, Jan, that's when she and Paul first got married. She founded uh, TBN, Trinity Broadcasting Network, and TBN grew to become the United States' largest Christian television network, offering 24-hour commercial-free programming. Wow. And also, TBN is currently the third largest over-the-air station group in the United States, measured you know, as percentage of homes reached. And it, it beat CBS, Fox, and NBC according to the TV News Check's annual listing of the top 30 station groups. Isn't that something? Wow. And so I think that's a wonderful tribute to a lady who spent her life helping people, and there she is with her grandchild and her husband. And, of course, my condolences to the Crouch family because we just lost her. So God bless Jan. She left a great legacy, especially nice. with TBN. Nice. Thanks, Asa. Sure. That was awesome. That was Musical Notes with Asa Farunay. And it uh, looks like we're switching gears back over to uh, some more events. So this is what's going on tomorrow. Uh, so over at the Barn Movement Studio, they've got an eight-week Sunrise Kundalini Yoga class. It starts at 7.30. Um, and so it unleashes the power of Kundalini Yoga, incorporating breath, meditation, asanas, and mantra into each practice. Open to all levels and abilities, and drop-ins are welcome. Um, it's going to go from 7.30 to 8.30 from June 7th to July 26th. Over at the Missoula Public Library is open hours in the makerspace. It starts at 10 a.m. Uh, this allows visitors, allows visitors to work on a project of their choice or just explore the makerspace. Uh, over at the Big Sky Branch, uh, Big Sky High School Library, they've got their summer hours, and so they're open from 10 a.m. to 4 on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and Wednesdays from 12 to 6. Uh, and looks like they're not open on Mondays or Fridays. Over at the Children's Museum of Missoula, they've got Flags of the World starting at 11. You can learn about the flags of the world and do some coloring. That sounds fun. Over at the Roxy Theater, they've got their, they're showing the Lego movie at 11. Um, and so it's the Kid Stuff matinee at the Roxy Theater. Awesome. Kids Table is also at the Public Library again at 11.30. As I stated earlier about Monday's events, this is for uh, kids to have a free lunch. And then they do an activity after. Also at the Public Library is the Father's Day Art Card class. It starts at noon. Uh, you can call 721-2665 to register. Um, the space is limited to six people and it's our participants. It's open to participants in their teens or older. Sweet. It's featuring a local artist named Nora, so she'll guide you guys through coloring and making the card. Cool. Uh, over in the Elvis boardroom is Shooting the Bull Toastmasters. It starts at noon. This is a lively club that helps you improve your public speaking abilities as well as your leadership skills, grow your vocabulary. Uh, the Elvis boardroom is in the Florence building. Over at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center, they have a Using Windows 10 class. It starts at 1 p.m., 1 to 4 uh, from the for today and on Wednesday, it looks like 6.14 and 6.16, or Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, makes more sense. Uh, but it's located at 310 South Curtis Street, um, and it costs $51. Over at the Public Library is a uh, Children's Summer Activity Program. It starts at 2 p.m., um, and they're going to be Emily Walter, which is the cooking school manager at the Good Food Store, is going to inspire kids to learn about and to prepare healthy snacks. Cool. Yoga Warriors is at the Learning Center at Red Willow at 4. This is a specific yoga program designed for veterans and their caregivers to help with anxiety, PTSD, and sleeping problems. 
There's a farmer field day starting an organic orchard and vineyard. It starts at 4 p.m. And it's going to be at Spindrift Orchard and Vineyard. Um, and so this woman who has planted her first cherry and grapevines is excited to share everything she's learned over the past three seasons. So her grapes, uh, so she's got 160 grapevines of four different varietals and 270 cherry trees. Um, and she's preparing for the USDA organic inspections and certifications. So she'll be telling you all about how to grow these fruits and these trees as well as prepare and make sure that your farm is organic. Pretty cool. This next class is kind of interesting. It's uh, at the Good Food Store. And it's called Biking with the Good Food Store. It starts at 5.30. And so it's going to host a group of bike ride experiences to help beginner cyclists learn safe routes to their orga local organic grocer and how to bike with groceries. So there's like a commercial event? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of smart. I think it's smart. Like, I've biked with groceries before. And thankfully, I have a basket on my bike so I can, like, put stuff in my basket. But I've definitely had things, like, fall out and lost it along the way. So it's good to know. Uh, over at the public library, they've got a community creative writing workshop at six. It's a drop in, open drop in environment focused on the creative writing workshop process. Uh, over the Top Hat Lounge is a picking circle at six. That is the uh, this for bluegrass oriented musicians to come down there and jam out. Uh, over uh, Imagination Brewing Company is traditional Irish music that also starts at six. And then over at the Roxy Theater is a movie. It's called Time to Choose. And it also starts at 6 p.m. And so what it is, it's a movie about climate change. And so what it's, uh, it's a movie about understanding not only what is wrong, but what can be done to fix this global threat. This class is always great. It's the financial fitness class at Homeworth. It starts at 6 p.m. and it's June 14th, 15th, and 16th, so three days in a row. And what it is is helping you get into financial shape, uh, set goals for saving, spending and saving, managing debt, and learning other money management skills and how to take charge of your financial life. So you can call 532-4663, extension 10, to sign up and register for this class, or you can go to homeward.org. Um, it's always free, and so if you want to do it, it's always smart to sign up quickly as they do fill up, and it's a really good class to take. Well, they've got their FALF and yoga in the parks starting up. So FALF, uh, starting at 5 to 7. They are, it looks like they're going to be playing at Tool Park tomorrow night. You can visit their website to see each location each week. Uh, I don't know what website it is because I didn't see that, but I would think that it's just like Missoula Recreation. It's from the uh, City of Missoula website. Yeah. And then Yoga in the Parks is going on at the same time at 6. It's going to be at McCormick Park. I, there's a uh, suggested donation of $3 for adults and then a dollar for kids. But you don't have to, you know, suggest it. And just bring your own logo, bring your own yoga mat. Your own logo mat. Um, and then we've got two more events. So over at Stage 112 is a comedy open mic night that starts at 8. It's the farewell roast of J Zach Jarvis. So Zach Jarvis is a local comedian around Missoula. He's been around for a while. He's pretty funny if you guys haven't seen him. And so he's moving away to Portland. So this is his roast. It should be pretty funny. It starts at 8, and that's tomorrow at Stage 112. And then my last event for tomorrow is at the Top Hat Lounge at 8 o'clock. It's an acoustic show by a person called The White Buffalo. Cool. So check out MissoulaEvents.net, University of Montana, uh, the Missoulian, and then the Independent for more resources and more events. Cool. Yeah. Well, as I promised uh, a week or so ago, is I did a uh, Tales from the oh, that's right. story. So, you know, I, I could get fairly creative for the most part. But of course, um, I like to uh, make up things for <laughs> uh, Hallmark or Bullmark. And I decided to just make up a whole new segment. Uh, and it's called Tales from the Weekend. Are you guys ready to totally. listen to my little tale yep. from the weekend? Let's see what Scott did this weekend. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> the story begins with a newly purchased permanent marker. Let's call him Pete, the permanent marker. Okay. Pete is an uptight and believes he's made for bigger and better things. Pete is a little rough around the point. And why not? He's a micro-tipped permanent marker. <laughs> Pete is stubborn, but with a sharp wit and a big heart. The story begins in a coffee shop where permanent markers are discarded quickly as they are used to misspell names of customers on frappuccinos and other crappuccinos people <laughs> buy to get their fixes. Uh, Pete has refused to partake in any of these rituals, and thus 
hid himself among the far end of the mug with the tasteless humor painted on it. As the pins and markers uh, began to dwindle, Pete was finding himself with less and less friends to keep him company through the days. New pins and markers would come in and replace the old ones while Pete was waiting for the right day to uncap and show everybody what he's made of. I think it's ink. <laughs> Weeks pass, and Pete it was giving up hope until the cafe had a new artist come in who decided to use the bland-looking cups and draw beautiful drawings on them. Pete fell in love with the art and tried to get the artist to pick him, but the artist had his own pin. Days passed as the artist would always order coffee black with ten sugars and no Pete the permanent marker. It has seemed that his stubbornness, Pete was never going to get his chance to show his stuff. It wasn't until one day that the artist forgot his pin. Pfft, how? No, it's an artist. Why can't you forget? <laughs> but regardless of that, he forgot his pin. He began to panic and get nervous until one of the baristas picked up Pete and handed it to the artist. <sighs> Pete was finally going to get his chance to shine and see his mark along the other cups that have been marked. With each stroke, Pete felt a tingling down his name brand logo. <laughs> Suddenly, the artist stopped, then made the same stroke again. Again and again, the stroke of Pete across the cup. The artist stood up. Ma'am, this marker ran out of ink. That's how he talks. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cowboy artist. Pete realized that while all this time he spent avoiding the baristas, the artist tossed Pete in the trash and the last thing Pete saw was the drawing of a flower on a naked cup. The moral of the story is, there's a whole world out there, and don't wait to get all dried up to get your chance to show the world what you've got. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. I enjoy that. That was a great little story. Tales from the weekend. Oh, poor Pete. Poor Pete, the permanent marker. But now we know. Yep. We can't just wait. We can't just wait. Good. Yep. R.I.P. Yep. Nice, I like that. Yep. Of course, um, this is something I'll probably try to do as, as many Mondays as possible. And I'm just trying to come up with some more segments to add a little spice to the Wake Up Morning show as well. Um, um, my goal is just to like, have a page, not to be any longer than a page, so I don't you know, risk going over. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> too much time. Too much time. Too, too in-depth. Too much time on my hands. Not enough time. <laughs> Not enough time on my hands. Woohoo! All right, okay. anyways, to find out more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to our website, wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. <laughs> so nice, we made you write out twice. You can like us on our Facebook page right here, Wake Up Missoula. And you can go at Wake Up Missoula on Twitter to follow us and see all our posts about our great videos and more. Missoula Community Access Television is also on Twitter. You can follow us at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information, go to MCAT.org. Yes, and of course our summer camps start next week. Uh, we're still looking for kids to join in our wildlife camp, which is starting on the 20th and it goes until the 24th. Mm -hmm. And it's from one to five. And then of course we have two animation camps happening in um, July yep. and it's all starting on July 11th but of course we still have open spots in our July 18th through the 22nd camp so we're still looking for people if you're interested in stop animation call MCAT at 542-6228 um, or you can email us um, MCAT at MCAT.org and um, yeah you can eat and the number again is 542-6228 otherwise known as 542 MCAT yes yeah. Like, I, I totally <laughs> right. like, Let's throw it back. Uh, here's the number Let's again. 542-6228. Otherwise known as 542-MCAT. MCAT. Yes. yes. But thanks for joining us, you guys. Our first Monday back was a success. Mm -hmm. And we'll, thanks Audrey for joining yeah, us the show. Jim and if you are a kid or you know any of your, your kids Jeez. that are uh, grandkids that are age 13 to 19 and who live, want to learn a little bit more about uh, sexuality, not necessarily about like sex education, but it's more about what what it means to be uh, you know like adjust mm -hmm. to the uh, modern world. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So thank you very much, everyone, for Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. Here's Asaf Adonai. We'll see you all Wednesday. Thank you.